Hi, PNG Assassin here, or Kevin. I just want to give you a quick tutorial on how to create an answer file for your Windows 7 uh, operating system. What an answer file does is it just automates the process of installation. So, what you can do is go to Google and look up uh, Windows Automated Installation Kit for Windows 7 or whatever operating system you have. I believe it only works with Windows 7 though. So then you can just click the free download. It's uh, it's 1.7 gigabytes, so it'll be it'll take a little bit, but I actually already have it downloaded. So then you can either extract the file with 7-zip or whatever zip program you use, and uh, or you could use a Magic ISO, which is a freeware program. You can uh, mount uh, the ISO and just browse. The browse it or have auto run run and start the CD and install it. Once it's done it'll ins it'll install in your start menu and you can just go to start menu all programs Microsoft Windows AIK and Windows System Image Manager. For me uh, this works a lot better. I just go to my Windows ISO or whatever I need and I have the 32-bit Enterprise Windows 7 edition. What I do is, because uh, I don't have a disk in my computer right now, I can just use 7-zip and I can extract it to my computer. I extract it to my computer because we need to access the install.wim file and also the CLG file that is in the ISO. We do that because using the Windows System Image Manager, we can select the catalog file or the Windows image, and it'll just uh, sort of automate the process. It'll be able to pair the answer file we're about to create along with the image file because you can have different answer files to image files, and it'll detect that. For instance, a 32-bit and, and a 64-bit are different operating systems, and sometimes they, they'll have different switches in the... Uh, auto unattend .xml. So now that that's done, I can see that it has extracted to my uh, documents folder. So within Windows System Image Manager, I can right I can right click the select a Windows image or catalog file. So now I have to go find this. Let's see. And then you have to, the file I just extracted is named Windows 7 32-bit Enterprise, the same name as the ISO. Go into the folder and go to Sources. And in the Sources, you'd want to select install.wim or the CLG file. I don't think it would matter because the catalog file is with it. You need this because sometimes you'll come up with an error and it's better just to include both the catalog file and the WIM, WIM image together. So now that you want to create an answer file, you can either open an answer file and go to Computer, your C drive, Program Files, uh, Windows AIK, uh, Samples, and just use one of their samples. But I'd like to configure one right from scratch. So by using the trusty friend Google, we can, use, we can Google uh, a walkthrough of how to set up or build a simple answer file for computers. So here we can just follow along with what Microsoft has on their website. So, for instance, this one is the setting up the disk. I believe this just selects the disk and wipes it. It'll, it's just like in the process of selecting your disk and choosing format, delete, or maybe install new drivers. So let's do that now. I'm going to go in the Windows image. I have to go to my components. Then I have to go find Windows Setup. And then as I can see, it's a disk configuration disk. So I'll look in here, disk configuration disk. Then I'll want to uh, actually add all of these. So you have to right click it and do add settings to pass one. Uh, don't want to add that twice. So I just right clicked and added uh, each folder. And as you can see, it appeared in the in the answer file area, 
Windows PE, x86, etc. So now I believe it's disk ID 0 because this is their, your first disk and if you have more than one or multiple hard drives you obviously want to change that. And then will wipe disk, of course we want to do that because this, this, uh, we're assuming this will be a fresh, inst fresh installation. Otherwise it will install over your old installation and rename your old C drive to windows.old. So now that we see uh, creating partitions, we want to do that because we want this all automated. Why not? So Windows Setup, Disk Configuration, Disk, Create Partitions, Create Partition. Order 1, Size 200. This is that bootloader, I believe, EFI. All right. Actually, this is the wrong file. We don't want that kind. Yeah, here we go. Build a simple answer file. Don't have the uh, other document open. So, where are we? Create partition extended false. Extended false. Good order. One. Size. I'm going to do twenty-five thousand because VirtualBox will be twenty-five thousand. Type. What kind of type? We want primary. And then, as you can see, uh, Microsoft Windows International Core Win PE. Uh, we gotta go find that now. International Core P. So just like we did with the disk configurations, we're going to right-click it and add it to pass one. So input local is input local system local UI language and user locale. So we want to do NUS if you speak English, see English, etc. And just we can just paste that in each each box. That just selects the English option. So for instance when you first boot up the Windows CD it will just select English. You have to select English first or next or whatever and then later it will also ask you what type of language you speak or see or whatever. Whatever it may be. So then set up UI language. I believe this is actually the P Windows PE and the setup UI language, I think they're about the same thing, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Just set them both. That's what Microsoft suggests, so I'll do it here. And then the will show UI, that'll, that just means if anything bad happens, just show the user interface and stop going forward with the installation. So then the disk configuration, since we already have that, we can go here. We'll show UI, again, on error, if it, in case it messes up. This configuration disk, zero, true. All right, we already did that with the other tutorial. Create partition, false, we just did that. Modify partition, so we can just uh, minimize that. Go down here to disks, modify partition, add it to pass one, Windows PE. Looks like okay, I already added it. I keep forgetting that. And under modify partitions, and then modify partition, we want to make this active. active and extended we don't want that format NTFS label you can label this whatever they want let's just do OS install spell install right though letter C drive order one partition one that just uh, puts the disks in space so in case you have more than one disk it'll make sure the C drive is the first in the order then we got to go to Windows Setup Image Install. So minimize that, or maximize it rather. Go find Image Install, OS Image, I believe. OS Image, yep. Then we'll add that to Windows Pass 1. Install to available partition. I don't think they have us do that. OS, yep, on error. Let's do on error. All right. So then image install, OS image, install to, install to disk zero, because this is the one we just did in uh, create partitions, if you remember, disk zero, partition one. And then of course there's the install from, you can uh, set up the path, probably a net, yeah, network or domain path, and just select that, so in case, 
I don't know, I guess in case you're doing a network install. So then, let's see, product key will show UI on error. And that's my alarm clock. Well, that was my grandfather clock, so I just muted the video for a second. So, we're on product key, Windows Setup User Data Product Key. And, let's see, go back here. Where are we again? So then we can minimize this, go to User Data, Product ID, or Product Key, rather. Right-click it and just add it to Windows Pass PE. You want to fill this out if you are not using a volume license. I have a volume license key, so we'll have to go somewhere else to do that. But if you have a normal key, uh, I'm not sure if you would do auto and intend on just a basic key, but this is where you would put it. Now, if you're using a volume license key, you will want to figure out where to add this first. We can, we can just continue. I'm not going to figure this out right now. So then uh, OAM information, your manufacturer, help customized. You can fill this out, obviously. It's just an example file, so I'm just going to skip that. So then Microsoft Windows Shell Setup, out of box experience. We're going to right-click this, add settings to pass one to Ubi system. We're, gonna, we're not going to hide the EOL page. Uh, protect my PC. Yeah, we'll want to do that. Network location. Let's do work. And then f Windows deployment, reseal. This is after it sets up. So, Windows deployment. Is this under? Let's go find this. <laughs> Windows deployment. Where is it? There it is. Hiding. Alright, so I finally found Windows deployment, and then we can extend OS partition, generalize. We'll want to reseal, add this setting to the last pass in our system, and then force shutdown now, false mode. We're going to just do audit. We want to do audit because it'll set up a system prep because my goal here in these tutorials is to set up a system prep image so we can system prep system prep an image, capture it, and then deploy it. And then finally a Windows shell startup uh, setup, I mean, auto login. You can turn this on if you want to have the administrator account automatically log in. I think I'll do that now. So we would just want to right click that and add settings to pass 7 in out of box system. This will log me in after 5 minutes of operations. And now I will, let's see, let's google that for a second. Volume, license, auto on attempt. I forget where we put this. Let's see what Microsoft. Um, specialize. Let's see. 
Let me just pause it so I can go find it myself. All right, I didn't have to pause it. I just uh, searched some more volume activation. You have to do Microsoft Windows uh, shell setup, and then what did it say? Product key. Here we go. Here we go. So on the shell setup, and not any of the subdirectories, you have to right-click shell setup and go to specialize. And then the specialized, you can add your uh, volume license key, and I'll do that now. So now that I entered my key, I can just go up to Tools and validate my answer file. As you can see, I can I am getting some warning messages and not errors. Errors would come up with the red X on right where the uh, yellow exclamation is. These just mean that I haven't configured these settings and it will not be saved in the answer file, as we can read down here. The setting has not been modified and it will not be saved to the answer file. So now that you've created your answer file, you can go save it. Now where you save it doesn't really matter. If you if you are installing this on a on a desktop, you can use a USB key and just put it in the root of a USB key or you can just uh, put it in the root of your ISO file so I'll just name, name this auto unattend .xml and you can just click save and then when you're done you can close the window now that we created an answer file we'll have to remake the ISO file of Windows 7 32-bit enterprise Putting the auto unintend in the root folder of the enterprise folder, uh, the installation will automatically find it, find it and use it.